Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share what I feel the Lord has given me to share with everyone this morning. First of all, let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for what all you've done and what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ dying on that cross for all of our sins. Lord, we thank you for making a way where there was no way for all of us to be saved through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your unconditional love for all of us that reassures us that you will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we pray for everyone today as we go out by our way. Lord, not our will, but thine be done. Here we are, Lord, your servants, willing and ready to serve in any way you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I'd like to share a very special uh, message. It's called, To Meet Such a Man. I sat with two friends in the picture window of a restaurant just out of the corner of the town square. The food and the company were both especially good that day. As we talked, my attention grew outside across the street. There walking into town was a man who appeared to be carrying all his worldly goods on his back. He was carrying a well-known sign that read, I will work for food, and my heart sank. I brought him I brought him to the attention of my friends and noticed that others around us had stopped eating to focus on him. Heads moved into a mixture of sadness and disbelief. We continued with our meal, but his image lingered in my mind. We finished our meal and went out separate ways. I had errands to do and quickly set out to accomplish them. I glanced toward the town square, looking somewhat half-heartedly for the strange visitor. I was fearful knowing that seeing him again would cause some response. I drove through town and saw nothing of him. I had made some purchases at a store and got back in my car. Deep within me, the Spirit of God kept speaking to me. Don't go back to the office until you at least have driven around one more time around the square. Then with some hesitancy, I headed back into Quirk's town. As I turned to the square's third corner, I saw him. He was standing on the steps of the front of the church, going through his sack. I stopped and looked, feeling both compelled to speak to him, yet wanting to drive on. The empty parking space on the corner seemed to be a sign from God, an invitation to park. I pulled in and I got out and approached the town's newest visitor. Looking for the pastor, I asked. Not really, he replied. Just resting. Have you eaten today? Oh, I ate something early this morning. Would you like to go to lunch with me? Do you have some work I would do for you? I could do for you? No. No work, I replied. I commune here to work from that city, but I would like to take you to lunch. Sure, he replied with a smile. As he began to gather his things, I asked for some surface questions. Where are you headed? He said, St. Louis. Where are you from? Oh, all over, mostly Florida. How long have you been walking? He said, 14 years. I knew I had met someone unusual. We sat across, we sat across from each other in the same restaurant I had left earlier. His face was weathered slightly beyond 38 years. His eyes were dark yet clear, and he spoke with an unusual language that was startling. He removed his jacket to reveal a bright t-shirt that said, Jesus is the never ending story. Then Daniel's story began to unfold. He had seen rough times early in his life. He'd made some wrong choices and reaped the consequences. 14 years earlier, while backpacking across the country, he had stopped on the beach of Daytona. He tried to hire on with some men who were putting up a large tent and some equipment, a concert, he thought. He was fired, he was hired but the tent could not hire a concert revival. It was, a con it was not a concert, it was a revival services. And in those services, he saw light more clearly and he gave his life over to God. Nothing's been the same since, he said. I felt the Lord telling me to keep walking. And so I did, some 14 years now. Ever think of stopping, I asked? Oh, once in a while, when it seems to get the best of me, but God has given me this calling. I give out Bibles. That's what's in my sack. I work to buy food and Bibles, and I give them out. 
when his spirit leads. I sat amazed. My homeless friend was not homeless. He was on a mission and lived this way by choice. The question burned inside for a moment and then I asked, what's it like? What? To walk into a town carrying all your things on your back and to show your sign? Oh, it was humiliating at first. People would stare and make comments. Once someone tossed a piece of half-eaten bread and made a gesture that certainly didn't make me feel welcome. But then it came humbling to realize that God was using me to touch lives and change people's concept of other folks like me. My concept was changing too. We finished our dessert and gathered his things. Just outside the door, he paused. He turned to me and he said, Come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom I've prepared for you. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. A stranger, and you took me in. I felt as if I were on holy ground. Could you use another Bible, I asked. He said he preferred a certain translation. It traveled well, and it was not too heavy. It was also his personal favorite. I've read it through 14 times, he said. I'm not sure if we've got those, but let's stop by our church, and I'll see if I can find my new friend a Bible. That would be well, and he seemed to be very grateful. Where are you headed from here, I asked. Well, I found this little map on the back of this amusement park coupon. Are you hoping to hire on there for a while? No, I just figured I should go there. I figured someone under that star right there needs a Bible, so that's where I'm going next. He smiled, and the warmth of his spirit radiated the sincerity of his mission. I drove him back to the town square, where he'd met two hours earlier as he drove. It started raining. We parked and unloaded his things. When you si would you sign the autograph book for me, he asked. I'd like to keep a messages from people that I met. I wrote in his little book, his comment to his calling had touched my life. I encouraged him to stay strong, and I left him with a verse of scripture from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Thanks, man, he said. I know we just met and we're really just strangers, but I love you. I know, I said, I love you too. The Lord is good. Yes, he said. How long has it been since someone hugged you? I asked. A long time, he replied. And so on the busy street corner of the drizzling rain, drizzling rain, my friend and I embraced, and I felt deep inside that I had been changed. He put his things on his back, smiled with his winning smile, and said, See you in New Jerusalem. I'll be there, as I replied. He began his journey again. He headed away with a sign dangling in the pack of his dangling from his bedroll and pack of Bibles. He stopped and he turned and said, When you see something that makes you think of me, will you pray for me? You bet I shouted back. God bless. God bless, and that was the last time I saw him. Late that afternoon, as I left my office, the wind blew strong. The cold front had settled and hard upon the town, and I bundled up and hurried to my car. As I sat back and reached for the emergency brake, I saw them, a pair of well-known work gloves, neatly laid on the length of the handle. I picked them up and thought of my friend and wondered if his hands would stay cold that night without them. Then I remembered his words. If you see something that makes you think of me, will you pray for me? Today, his gloves lie on the desk of my office. They help me to see the world. They help me to see the word world and its people in a new way, and they help me to remember those hours with my unique friend and to pray for his ministry. See you in New Jerusalem, he said. Yes, Daniel, I know I will. If this story touches you, as it has touched me, I hope you will pass it on to other people. God bless you.